So the question actually goes, does an illegal occupier have the right to sublet a house or collect rent without authorization from the legal owner? Especially when there's an eviction uh, of this occupant that's set down in court, but that eviction that eviction is not yet been finalized. Bruno, do we have an answer for Shushok in this, uh, with this with this question? Look, short answer, short answer is no. Uh, the reality behind this is this illegal occupier. The illegal occupier doesn't even have a right to occupy the property themselves, let alone try to give that right on to somebody else. So uh, the conversation would be a lot, um, a lot different if there was an actual valid lease agreement in place. Um, you know, maybe this is a dispute around whether the lease was cancelled, wasn't cancelled, whether the lease allows for subletting or doesn't allow for subletting. So there's a lot of different uh, permutations or variations that we can actually look at. Uh, but I mean, at, at the answer as it stands now, no, if it's an illegal occupier. If it's an illegal occupier because uh, you guys are still disputing the illegality or the unlawfulness, then the next part of the answer is look at the lease agreement and just have a look what it says. If it's silent, uh, then one could argue that there could potentially have been a right that the tenant had to sublet. But if the lease agreement says, no, you're not allowed to, which most lease agreements do, then no, you can't sublet. Um, if there's an eviction pending, it gives me the indication that you've kind of made your mind up that the person is unlawful. So it would depend on what's actually happening with that eviction. Oh, thanks, Bruno. Um, that was a very quick answer, actually. And now moving on to the second question is, I have a tenant who refuses to move out. I've heard that evictions can be quite costly. I'm thinking about paying the tenant to vacate the property. What are the risks that are associated with this um, method of coercion to get, uh, you know, a tenant or an illegal occupant or whatever, maybe out of a property? It's 100% allowed. I mean, we have freedom to contract. So you can negotiate anything with anybody. And you, you're very welcome to negotiate with a tenant that's an illegal occupant now. So you didn't pay his rent. You've canceled the lease agreement. And you then negotiate. And you say, listen, if you move out, I'm going to refund your deposit. Um, so you can use the deposit money to move or whatever. I have been doing evictions for too long and I have seen this go south on people many, many more times than what I've seen it work. I've seen it work and, and that's always the problem. It's the same as with spoliation. I have seen landlords disconnect utility supply illegally and it works, they then and move out. I have seen landlords move people in with an illegal occupant and then they move and it works i've seen that but i've seen many more times like in i'm not many i'm not saying double the times much more than that like way more often it backfires on the landlord so hard whether it's spoliation or paying the tenant to move i've seen it backfire really so many times that i wouldn't recommend it unless it's done through a specialist eviction attorney and why i'm saying that is it's similar I, I know i always compare law to medicine for a very good reason as much as i know um you know the you can pop into a pharmacy and the guy can ask you three questions about your symptoms and the pharmacist can prescribe you something not prescribe recommend some self-medication Yes, okay, cool, that could work for, for a lot of people, a lot of times. But if you're the unlucky winner, where the pharmacist says use this cream and turns out it's going to turn you purple and you're the one unlucky loser that that's going to happen to, it, it's really, you're going to sit back and think, oh my goodness, I wish I actually ended up spending the money with the dermatologist. It would have been cheaper in the long run. And that's exactly what I see with evictions. And and, Bruno and Chris, I can see both of you are smiling and nodding because we've all seen this situation backfiring. 
I think for, for the benefit of our viewers, why it backfires is more important than it does backfire. Why it backfires is the Prevention of Illegal Evictions Act says that you have to follow a very specific process of obtaining an eviction order. You can't circumvent that. You can't contract out of legislation. You can't do anything else. You can't contract that. Say, say you do a proper contract. You've done, you are an attorney, and I've seen attorneys do this. You're an attorney. You're an expert on labor law. And <laughs> you're an expert labor lawyer. I'm giggling because we are both all three of us, not really that hot on labor. So um, you're an expert in labor law. So you know how to draft a settlement agreement. You've drafted settlement agreements for dismissals so many times. I mean, resignations so many times that you can't even um, it, it, not do it without doing it perfectly. And now you're following the same sort of method. You draft a settlement agreement. Tenant says he will vacate on this date. You will pay this amount into his account before he vacates. And if he then doesn't vacate, so you even think about this, if he doesn't vacate, you can use this agreement um, to authorize the sheriff to do the eviction. Now, there's a lot wrong with this because Rule 46, am I right, of uh, the High, Uniform High Court Rule says that you can't make a settlement agreement in order of court unless there's an underlying action. Okay, cool. Now, we've all agreed to everything. It looks perfect. Everything seems to be checking out. The moment you approach a court and you say, this is a residential property. I want to evict this person. Look at this. We've agreed that he will vacate. He didn't give me the eviction order. The only thing the court can say is go back to square one, my dungeon. It's lovely. And your drafting was beautiful. Your kids are going to love this scrap paper to draw on the other side. And um, this is not going to work because I can't make this or uh, this settlement agreement in order because none of these tick the boxes that you have to tick to obtain an eviction order in terms of the prevention of illegal evictions act. What you can do is you can commence eviction proceedings. You can initiate proceedings and you already have the pending list case um, that's that's already there. Then you can say to the tenant, tenant, I'm going to postpone this sine die. That means until another date, we'll tell the court later when we come back. That's that's the good translation on sine die. <laughs> Do you like that? We'll tell you when we see you again. I'll call you, don't call me, basically, is what sine die means. <laughs> and um, so then in that time, you can settle. You can make, you can then, if the tenant then doesn't comply with the settlement agreement, then on your return day to court where you've already followed all your processes in terms of buy, then you can return to court with your settlement agreement. And then the court will say, okay, Laka, now we have an agreement that you will vacate and you've complied with buy. Now I can make your settlement agreement an order of court. Please, 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 viewers, I am not saying don't settle and don't make this plan. I, you guys know I'm a, a sucker for settlement and I avoid court like the plague. But if you, uh, when it comes to a, a, an eviction, especially uh, where somebody resides, it, 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 this is this is the time you go to court. This is why why the courts are there, and this is where you use an expert attorney who can help you. Because if you go to another attorney, general practice attorney. Obviously, they're going to think you can settle on this because they do not know the case law. It's like not even intricate little things about family law, labor law. As, as eviction expert attorneys, we don't know that. And for that, at the same token, other attorneys don't know um, what the case law says about this. The law is a very, very wide field. So be very careful and be very careful to pay somebody before they are out. If you do want to pull a cowboy move, at least put the money outside the door and exchange it on key handover. You're allowed to do that. And if you really feel cowboy, at least do that. But if you pay before the time, you're going to come to uh, Bruno or, or, or us. And uh, then you're going to say, but I've already spent like 20,000 rand. And now you're telling me I need to pay another 30, 35,000 rand for an eviction. That's unfair. And uh, we're going to smile politely and say, 
You should have paid that 20 to the tenant. We could have evicted him for that by, the, by now. So uh, I heard that's a long answer, but I think I've, I think we've seen too many mistakes yeah. on that. Absolutely agreed. 